Good day everyone, welcome to my channel. So our topic for disaster readiness and risk reduction for lesson number two is hazard, exposure, vulnerability, and capacity. So this will be the topic for quarter three and module number one. For the objective, you are going to differentiate among hazard, exposure, and vulnerabilities and give example from actual situations. Hello students! This module is about the basic factors of disaster and disaster rest. After studying and working on all the activities in this module, you will be able to determine the underlying factors that directly influence disaster. Disaster is different from hazard. A hazard may or may not result to a disaster. Suppose there is a very strong typhoon. When it hits a particular area and leaves no damages, then there is no disaster happened. But if it leaves great damages to lives and property, then that is what we call a disaster. Look at the figure below. Suppose you are along the hillside. On the top, there is a very big rock that is likely to fall and by the time it happens, it will hit you. In this case, the rock on the top is a hazard and you are vulnerable of it. When you say vulnerable, that the rock falls down and hit you causing you damage or injury, then that is what we call disaster. By just looking at the relationship between disaster risk and the factors hazard, exposure, vulnerability, and capacity, what can you say about it? This means that disaster risk could be greater if the factors such as hazard, exposure, and vulnerability are higher even though capacity is also higher. However, disaster risk can also be reduced or lessened if we will be decrease the hazard, exposure, and vulner vulnerability with an increase of capacity. As observed, the symbols become smaller or reduced. This means that we can reduce the risk brought about by an event or disaster by reducing the hazard, exposure, and vulnerability of the people or properties while increasing the capacity of the community. People differ in their exposure to rest as a result of their social group, gender, ethnic, or other identity, age, and other factors. Vulnerability may also vary in its forms. 
poverty, for example, may mean that the house is unable to withstand an earthquake or a very strong typhoon or lack of awareness and preparedness may result in a slow response to a disaster, leading to greater loss of life and properties or prolonged suffering of the victims. Capacity, on the other hand, can be described as the resources available to individuals, households, and communities to cope with a threat or to resist the impact of a particular hazard. Such resources can be physical or material, but they can also be found in a way a community is organized or in the skills or attributes of individuals and or organizations in the community. These are the terms associated with the disasters. Capacity. It is the combination of all the strengths, attributes, and resources available within a community, society, or organization that can be used to achieve agreed goals from Republic Act 10121. So example for that is the permanent housing, food security, and local knowledge. The next term is the disaster. So it is a serious disruption of the functioning of the community or a society involving widespread human, material, economic or environmental losses and impacts which exceeds the ability of the affected community or society to cope using its own resources. The next term is the disaster preparedness. It is a state in which individuals and groups of a community have developed plans, allocated resources, and established procedures for an efficient and effective implementation of the plans for the purpose of saving lives and preventing the further damage to property in the event of the disaster. It includes plans or preparation to made to save lives and help responses and rescue operations. The next term is the disaster risk reduction. So it is the concept and practice of reducing disaster risk through systematic efforts to analyze and reduce the causal factors of disasters, reducing exposure to hazard, lessening vulnerability of people and property, wise management of land and the environment, and improving preparedness for adverse events are all examples of disaster risk reduction. The next term is the disaster risk. It is the function of hazard, vulnerability, and capacity. The potential disaster losses in lives, health status, livelihoods, assets, and services which could occur to a particular community or a society over some specified future time period. It is a result from a combination of Hazards. The next term is the exposure. It is the degree to which the elements at rest are likely to experience hazard events of different magnitudes. The next term is vulnerability. It is the characteristics and circumstances of a community, system, or asset that can make it susceptible to the damaging effects of a hazard. So example for that is the poor location, house made of light materials, and community conflict. 